Communication is certainly one of the major virtues of David Sackett. He loves to teach, and I think his enthusiasm is, is easily picked up by the students. Colorful, endlessly enthusiastic, hopelessly optimistic, <laughs> and lots of fun. There's a number of things that, that Dave is has had an impact on, um, starting starting right back from from when he first came to Canada in, in, in the 60s. He um, was initially recruited um, to come to, to McMaster where they were starting up this new radical medical school and so he was he was recruited to come there and was the first, um, the chair of the first ever Department of Clinical Epidemiology which was at, at McMaster and since that time he, he's had a number of Firsts, and he, I mean, his textbook on clinical epidemiology is considered the textbook that, that everybody refers to for ClinEpi. Dr. Sackett's work in clinical epidemiology was in fact revolutionary. His work has forever transformed both clinical medicine and clinical research. Today, Dr. Sackett is regarded internationally as a leader in this field. First of all, he's building a bridge between basic science and real life application. And then the next bridge, which is what you might call evidence-based medicine, is a bridge between the research community and the practitioner community. And both those bridges are essential. You can't produce things in the laboratory that are then just handed off into practice. They actually have to be tested because they often don't work the way that the, sci the basic scientists hope. It was in clinical applications, or practice, that David Sackett identified questions that needed a research approach. Questions that led to studies with names like patient-physician compliance and the labeling effect of disease diagnosis, the latter getting him into some hot water south of the border. At the time that we were identifying the short-term harm that is done to hypertensive patients when they're labeled, there of course was a great uh, fad here in North America for hypertension screening. And when we presented the results of our labeling studies at a large hypertensive meeting in Washington, D.C., uh, there was considerable concern on the part of some of the establishment. So that when, at the end of that meeting, they had an open discussion about what that symposium should be like in the coming year, one of the people in the audience jumped up and said, keep those goddamn Canadians out of our meetings. Many would argue that David Sackett's greatest skill is one of communicator, teacher, and mentor. And there was quite a, f quite a few medical students who were feeling very depressed and were wondering whether or not this was the right career choice for them. And Dave happened to, uh, to um, meet some of, the, some of these students, and some of them were, were seriously considering dropping out of, of medicine and looking at another career. And he started a seminar series for medical students at um, one of the colleges at Maudlin College where he would um, present patient scenarios, like real patient scenarios, and they would talk about um, the uh, pathophysiology of, of what was going on in these patients. And it turned these students around. They loved medicine and they could actually see how the basic science lectures that they were doing and seminars that they, that they were participating in actually would have some, some relevance. Today, Dr. Sackett is thinking, writing, and teaching about randomized clinical trials. I think the work that David Sackett has done himself and through the people who he's taught and influenced uh, has had an enormous effect on health care, period. I don't mean just in Canada, but around the world. Uh, that is examining whether things work, how well they work, and what circumstances they work and how to translate that into effective care for people in real practice uh, settings. I think the legacy for that will grow over the next few decades. The whole concept though of evaluation in clinical settings and the high standard that he's raised that to and the high status that he's raised that to have attracted a lot of the very best and brightest scientists into applied research. I think the only certain immortality anyone has uh, is in the generations that follow. And uh, I would hope that I would be remembered as someone who is able to encourage, occasionally inspire, uh, show 
uh, young people how to engage in academic medical careers, um, have the excitement and enjoyment of the process, and do good for patients as they proceed.